to talk about kinematical conservation laws. These are equations of evolution of curve and surfaces. There are two parts, part 1 I shall develop the theory and in part 2 I shall show some applications. Propagating surfaces in space, we find propagating surfaces in a large number of physical phenomena interface between two liquids there are many examples of these as in oil extraction, crystal growth, propagation of curve linear and non-linear wave front and so many and many more. We need physically realistic mathematical method to study them. For this we first develop a theory called kinematical conservation laws in lecture 1. In lecture 2, we present some non-trivial applications, historical notes and references. KCL theory was first formulated in three stages, first Morton, Prasad and Ravindran in 1992 in 2D KCL, there we developed the 2D KCL, Giles, Prasad and Ravindran reference to in 1995 in 3D KCL. This was further developed and analyzed by Arun and Prasad in 2009 and then Prasad in 2016 D-dimensional KCL for propagating surface in D-dimensional physical space. All references and details are available in two books by me. First one is published in 2001 by Chapman and Hall and it is a very comprehensive book, but it contains only the theory of 2 D KCL. The second one is published in 2018 by Springer deals with D dimensional KCL in physical space uh, of arbitrary dimension D. Evolution of a surface by rays. When a surface omega t that is the symbol I want to use for a surface so evolves, there is a law which takes a point uh, p t to a point p t plus delta t from the surface at omega t to the surface at omega t plus delta t. And, uh, let us the call, let us call the path traced by this point a ray. Therefore, that is now the definition of a ray and figure denotes the ray when it moves in the normal direction to the surface and that is an isotropic evolution of the surface omega t in a ray velocity chi which is uh, m times n, n is the normal to the surface and this is the ray. Normal vector and normal velocity of the surface omega t and its iconal equation. Let n be the unit normal and c be the normal velocity of the surface omega t and that is represented by phi x t equal to 0, then the normal velocity c of omega t is given in terms of the ray velocity chi as c equal to inner product of n and chi. Further, the normal velocity c and the unit normal uh, vector n are given by c equal to minus phi t divided by modulus of gradient of phi and n equal to gradient of phi divided by modulus of gradient of phi. Eliminating c between number 1 and uh, first part of number 2, we get the iconal equation for the evolution of omega t and that is a very important equation phi t plus inner product of chi the ray vector and the gradient of phi that is equal to 0. Ray equations of propagating service. Now, from the iconal equation we derive the ray equations. 3 that is the iconal equation which I show here this one 
okay, is a nonlinear first order equation written explicitly in this form. The Sharpe's equations of this first order equation reduced to Hamilton canonical equations for x alpha and phi x alpha in linear equation in, in this equation x alpha cannot uh, x alpha uh, the equation for x alpha we can convert the derivatives with respect to phi x alpha into derivatives with respect to n alpha using the second relation in 2. The equation for x alpha turns out to be a quite big expression d x alpha d t equal to chi alpha plus n beta n gamma plus some quantity in the bracket that is an operator uh, chi uh, operating on chi gamma. And there is a summation convention over gamma uh, that is usually known due to the presence of the second term on the right hand side this equation is inconsistent, is inconsistent with the statement this one. And this is the statement for the ray velocity therefore, if this has to be like this then this part must be 0, this part must be 0. Hence, the ray velocity the uh, for the ray velocity second and third term must vanish and we get the important theorem which is there on the next plane. Ray equations for a propagating surface, now we give a important theorem. In order that chi x t n that is the vector this qualifies to be ray velocity, it must satisfy a consistency condition and that is a big expression like this. This one multiplied by chi gamma equal to 0 for each alpha alpha is here, each alpha 1, 2, 3 up to d, where the summation convention has been used uh, on a repeated subscripts. I continue with the ray equations. The second part of the Hamilton canonical equations for an iconal equation is the equation for phi x alpha. We use again the second relation in 2 and convert the equation for phi x alpha into equation for n alpha and that is d n alpha d t equal to minus n beta n gamma and an operator here uh, d d uh, uh, del del uh, eta beta alpha uh, multiplied operating on uh, chi gamma and that is denoted by a symbol psi alpha. Here this operator is written in this form okay. and the ray equations now the become d x alpha d t equal to chi alpha and d n alpha d t equal to n alpha n gamma and this operator operating on chi gamma equal to psi gamma. Written together looks complicated simplify in a particular case and that is on the next slide. Ray equations for isotropic evolution a wave equation in multi dimension that there it will simplify. For an isotropic propagation of a wave front omega t chi is, is in the normal direction and therefore, chi equal to n times c uh, where c is independent of uh, n that is the definition of isotropic propagation. In this case the consistency condition phi is automatically satisfied this will turn out to be ray velocity. An example of this is the wave equation in d plus 1 dimensional space with now I replace c by m the m dimensional wave equation is u t t minus m square Laplacian operating on u equal to 0 and Laplacian is defined in this way and m now is a function of x and t. When m is equal to constant then this equation becomes the wave equation otherwise this is Mm, this is a well known equation the wave equation therefore, I put the here the wave equation and the ray equations now become d x d t equal to n times m which is now in the normal direction 
and d n d t is minus l times m and this l is a operator which is gradient of gradient minus n times inner product of n uh, over gradient is a vector tangential derivative on omega t. The first and second part of the ray equations now become d x d t equal to m cos theta and d y d t equal to m sin theta, where n the unit normal is cos theta sin theta and theta is the angle which the normal makes with the x axis and d theta d t equal to minus and this operator which is tangential uh, operator on the surface on the curve omega t and minus this operator operating on m. The normal m makes an angle theta with the x axis and the derivative this is a tangent is in tangent direction making an angle pi by 2 plus theta with the x axis. Re equations of the wave equation I continue with this note d added to the wave equation d wave equation when m is constant the re equations m and n become d x d d x alpha d t equal to plus minus n alpha a d n alpha d t equal to 0. That means, along the ray the normal direction remains constant. The rays of the wave equation are straight lines in space time given by x equal to x naught plus minus n alpha t minus t naught and these are straight lines in space time. Let us give an example of the application of the ray theory for the wave equation. Suppose we have a moving curve which is formed by a straight part another straight part meeting at a corner here. Then the rays starting from the upper part they are shown here the rays starting from the lower part are shown here and these rays are given by Fermat's principle and they give the part of the wave uh, part of the curve up to this and this. But then there is circular part of the wave also and this is uh, circular part is a curve produced by corner O by Huygens method and this is an arc of a circular center at O and the blue part uh, continuous line is a part of the curve produced by the smooth part of the initial position of the curve by the ray theory. Failure of the ray theory when the singularities appear. Equations of the ray theory are differential equations. The theory in the name of geometrical optics goes back to 1837 and 1911. You can see the reference in Courant and Hilbert uh, on the page 640. When singularities on the propagation surface appear, the ray theory breaks down ray theory ceases to be valid because that is in the form of differential equations and at singularities the differential equations are not valid. Then we need a new theory to also to capture the new type of physically realistic singularities in the form of kings and this led to the formulation of kinematical conservation laws in 1993 to we had the uh, ray, the ray equations and we wanted to solve some problems, but singularities appear and when singularities appear we could not proceed further with the ray theory and then we needed the three uh, kinematical conservation laws a new theory. Kinematical conservation law turn out to be basic fundamental equations valid for the equations of all surfaces. Ray equations they, though existed much earlier can be derived from the kinematical conservation laws. Two dimensional kinematical conservation laws and this was derived in 1992. Let me explain the geometry and of the 
uh, which is required for the development of the kinematical conservation laws. Ray coordinate system associated with the moving surface, moving curve omega t in and the ray coordinate system is j and t, but let me define how, what is j and t. Now, t equal to constant give the successive positions of the moving curve, j equal to constant give the rays, uh, the rays are shown in blue color and then with the x direction the ray makes an angle theta and then on the curve t equal to constant we have a line element a small part of this curve which I denote by g d xi. xi is defined okay, along the ray and g is a new quantity which I am defining now that is g d xi is the element of the length here. Similarly, m is the velocity of propagation of the uh, along the ray and m d t is the element of length. Therefore, this is now m delta t is an element of length along the ray and uh, therefore, now uh, we have got m delta t and g delta psi as the two um, elements of the along these curves. More or less I have defined all these uh, quantities and they are shown here. Okay. And now what happens that when we have these elements of uh, uh, length on the two curves, we can take geometry, we can uh, we can use simple geometrical cons consideration to give d x equal to minus g sin theta d i plus m cos theta d t and d y equal to g cos theta d i plus m sin theta d t. Quite often we shall use x 1 for x and x 2 for y. This relation d x is given by this expression. Therefore, partial derivative of x with respect to xi will be minus g sin theta. Similarly, other partial derivatives and then the second derivatives x xi t i equate to x t xi for a smooth curve and geomet this geometrical consider consideration give us such a beautiful simple equations which we call 2 d k c l m is properly non dimensional front velocity omega t which we have been using. Meaning of a conservation law, now these are kinematical conservation laws. Meaning of a conservation law is same as what you have seen in fluid mechanics as in the case of conservation of mass, but the conservation law is expressed in terms of integral formulation not in this differential symbols. Okay. Conservation law is expressed in terms of integral formulation 17 and 18 are simply symbolic representations of the two integral relations. Being integral relations these equations can have discontinuous solution because integral expressions uh, can uh, even the discontinuous functions can be uh, integrated and these are called weak solutions. Okay. Now, then certain important points which arises from these kinematical conservation laws. Let us see this. 2 D kinematical conservation laws is a pair of conservation laws in one space like variable xi. It is underdetermined, these are only two equations in three quantities m, theta and g. Therefore, they cannot be solved unless there is some more equations. Therefore, additional closer relations depending on the dynamics of omega t yield a completely determined system. Weak solution of the conservation law can have shocks in xi t plane leading to a new type of singularity in x y plane. Now, shock is a mathematical um, entity 
which is defined in the theory of conservation laws and uh, when we have shocks, we get shocks in the xi plane because these equations are in xi plane and they are mapped into x y plane and th that leads to a new type of singularity. The mapping between xi t and x 1 x 2 plane is given by the ray equations which are uh, um, given shown here x x 1 t x 2 t vector is equal to m cos theta sin theta. Shocks are ma ma mapped into kings and here is a king phenomena. I explained here there is a moving curve which consists of two straight parts joining at the point q and then this moving curve at the next time goes to the position like this again two straight parts. The rays uh, the kink now traces a kink path which is q 2 p dash and the rays they jump uh, they change their direction suddenly they jump in uh, the jump in their direction uh, when they cross the king path. Therefore, this is the king phenomena in 2 d we take omega to be curve I have already explained all these things on one side we have m plus quantities g plus quantities on the other side uh, we have g minus quantity and uh, m minus quantity. A great computational advantage KCL reduces a three dimension we had a problem actually the ray equations were originally in three independent variables x, y and t, but KCL reduces the three independent uh, indep uh, three dimensional problem in x, y, t space to a two dimensional problem in xi t plane which leads to a great computational saving in time and also robustness of the numerical scheme. Now, now I go to three dimensional KCL. Okay. Uh, this was derived in 1996 denoted by 3D KCL. Consider isotropic motion of the surface omega t in R 3 with the ray velocity this one and this is the kinematic uh, and this is the iconal equation. This is the first order partial differential equation normal velocity normal direction is given by this and I have already written earlier the Sharpe's equations yes. and the ray yes. equations d x d t equal to m n and d n d t equal to a tangential operator operating on n and these are 22 and 23 where l is the tangential derivative. Now, again we have uh, uh, undetermined system additional equation involving x, t and n gives the complete system. Therefore, now I define the ray coordinates on the moving surface in three dimensional space. Here is a picture of a surface in three dimensional space. The um, surface is shown uh, by omega t and that is the position of the surface at time t. Then there is a unit normal direction to the surface given by this and I take two um, surface coordinates. One is along xi 1, another is along xi 2 and then tangent directions to xi 1 I denote by bold u and uh, tangent direction to xi 2 I denote by bold v okay, that is the vector v and vector u. Therefore, that is how we define the surface coordinates on the moving surface. Now, that is already explained there, but little more is written about it and the normal direction n is equal to u cross v divided by modulus of u cross v and that is uh, taken in such a way that u v n forms a right handed 
system. Okay. Therefore, n is of this form. Now, two important things which you want to define is g 1, g 2. g 1 is a metric along xi 1. That means, g 1 d xi 1 is the element of distance along this. Then, g 2 is the metric along xi 2. When it means, g 2 xi 2 g 2 d xi 2 is the element of distance along this. Okay. Therefore, g 1 g 2 are matrix associated with the coordinates xi 1 xi 2. The normal velocity m serves as the role of the matrix uh, with respect to the time t. Now, for again from the geometrical uh, consideration, the expression uh, displacement d x can be expressed in terms of displacement d xi 1, d xi 2 and d t in uh, xi t in xi 1, xi 2, xi t express by an expression like this d x equal to g 1 u d xi 1 plus g 2 v d xi 2 plus m n d t and we have to remember this for future reference. Then integrability condition which is equating basically the second derivatives of the vector x with respect to xi 1, xi 2 and t and the integrability condition gives you a vector relation 26 g 1 t g 1 u t minus m n uh, differentiated with respect to xi 1 equal to 0, g 2 v differentiated, differentiated with respect to t minus m n differentiated with respect to xi 2, these two are vector relations. Third one, we get a relation which is geometrical solenoidal constraint and that is obtained by equating the derivatives of uh, x with respect to xi 1, xi 2 and this is given here. Okay, that is number 2 and then there is a theorem which tells if the geometrical solenoidal constraint is satisfied at t equal to 0, then the first two equations that is the these two uh, imply that they are satis that it is satisfied at t greater than 0 for all time. Now, I start three dimensional uh, KCL. Therefore, the three dimensional consist of equation 29, 30 and the solenoidal constraint here. Now, there are three, 6 equations here. This is constant which we, we do not consider as a, a part of the uh, um, KCL. You have only 2 components. V has only 2 components because these are unit vectors g 1, g 2 another 2 quantities m is another. Therefore, all together we have 7 variables, but only 6 equations 29 and 26. Therefore, it is underdetermined system. Properties of the KCL that we explain very well here. These are the ray equations I wrote earlier and these are the KCL along with the solenoidal constraint. There is a theorem which tells that this system is equivalent to this system for a smooth solution. Okay. And uh, that is important statement. Now, I come to jump conditions. Conservation laws, they have jump conditions. There are discontinuities in the solution and there are jump conditions across the conservation laws and they are written here. And when these jump curves in the xi, uh, in the uh, xi 1, xi 2 t space are mapped onto the x y, x 1, x 2, x y space, then the picture is like this. We get a king curve on the surface like this. And then uh, there is a conservation of distance that says an implication of the earlier theorem which I write here 
Application is conservation of the distance on the two sides of a king surface implies ranking of one your condition that means jump conditions and jump conditions imply conservation of distance for a displacement along a shock ray. I have derived the two dimensional kinematical conservation laws and three dimensional kinematical conservation laws. We will see these are all available in references which are here and the next page thank you for your attention